from California, Congressman Bill Bray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let, me just, let me just say, as a former mayor and chairman of a county of over a million, I take a look at this and I just can't fathom if we had, how we'd ever allow this in local government. I mean, this is almost like the government version of too big to fail is too big to, to be effective or even decent. I mean, some of this stuff is just out, you know, at a local level would just be nailed down really quick. There's not a city manager that would survive with this kind of lack of response to a problem. There's not a building inspector or a, um, you know, a public works director that would survive very, you know, six months with this kind of thing. And I hate to say it, it sort of really reinforces the argument of a lot of people in this town that you, Washington spending money is, has a built-in inefficiency in it that we should avoid with like, like the plague. Now, this is Duke. When we got into Katrina, and I'm going to let you work on this because I'm going to shift over to the gentleman next to you, but I looked at Katrina. I was down there. I've got my wife's family's from New Orleans, and I, we've got a place in Mississippi, and I saw the way that handled. How many people were, that were in that fiasco of, of abuse and, and um, you know, money switching and everything else, how many of them have been disbarred and restricted from access? I mean, I understand when you work with Louisiana, you've got a state half under indictment, half under water. But this thing is a federal government's responsibility, not Louisiana's responsibility. The DOJ Procurement Fraud Task Force has indicted and convicted several um, um, contractors and individuals. Um, FEMA, we have, has not debarred anyone to my knowledge. Um, it's been handled through the DOJ uh, Procurement Fraud Task Force to this point. So in other words, you've got to be convicted before FEMA is going to restrict your access to any more contracts. You do not have to be convicted. I mean, there has been a conservatism that we're... we're well, who's been, who's been restricted who hasn't been convicted by FEMA? No one to the... To the okay, that's what I mean. As yes. You may say that, but in results, it's got USAID. One of the thing, untold stories, in my opinion, after going to Afghanistan and talking with people, is one of the great untold stories, is everybody's talked about the for-profit uh, abuses in Iraq under the Bush administration. No one seems to be talking about the so-called non-profits and their abuses and their corruption in the system in Afghanistan during the Bush administration. And I think that if there was one place that this committee should be able to find bipartisan effort is to find out why have we totally ignored the abuses of the nonprofits in Afghanistan in a time when we all are very aware of the for-profit violations in Iraq. You have any comments about the, the handling of those grants and those, those programs in Afghanistan with the nonprofits? They're subject to the same basic set of rules and approaches. Um, I, I would have to get back to you separately on the, the uh, you know, what actions have been taken on, with respect to nonprofits. Some of our suspension and debarment actions are with respect to nonprofits, but I don't have the, the, uh, uh, the data specifically for Afghanistan. We also work with uh, organizations on compliance agreements. Sometimes compliance agreements are done in conjunction with um, uh, investigations by the Department of Justice or, 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 or actions by the Department of Justice and entered into for in settlement cases. In some cases, is it uh, they're done apart from uh, a, a legal setting. Okay, and let me just take all of us should be responsible for this, but wouldn't you admit that Congress, the oversight agencies, the media, have not given the same attention to corruption or abuses in the nonprofits, especially in Afghanistan, that has been focused on the for-profits in other countries. Wouldn't you agree that culturally, at least in the major appearance, is that the same hard standard is not being applied to nonprofits as it has been, at least from the media and the attention by Congress, if not by the agencies themselves, that we've done with the for-profits. I'm doing a sort of a quick mental scan of news articles and so on, and that there may be that yep. impression, but that is not our approach with respect to, um, oops, sorry, um, 
we, we, we should be treating them the same as federal dollars. Would the gentleman uh, yield? Yes, I yield. Just a quick follow-up. Mr. Duke, if I understood you correctly, seven, 200, since two, in, as of 2007, 768 people were convicted. Far more were charged, and yet FEMA has, in the, related to Katrina, FEMA has zero debarments. Th that is correct, Mr. Issa. Okay, then on behalf of the committee, why wouldn't we author a bill that created immediate and automatic debarment at the time of a conviction? You have discretion at the time of an accusation. You have discretion at the time of the indictment. But why would the chairman and I not author a bill that would simply create automatic debarment so that your failure of your agency years later, and I have 2007, but you've made it clear that you haven't done anything as of 2010, that it, this is not 400 days, this is zero response. Have you have any answer for why the chairman and I shouldn't simply author a bill and, and take it out of your hands, at least as to criminal convictions? Well, I mean, it has to be dealt with either way. I mean, we are, um, it is something we'll deal with. Um, such a bill would, would not be, um, no, I can't say anything about why. You, you, would you wouldn't oppose it since obviously FEMA hasn't done anything about these 768 people who have been convicted. No, I would not oppose it at this point. Well, uh, to reclaim my time, it sure be convenient n not to have our contracts being administered out of gentlemen. a, a uh, federal penitentiary cell, right? G gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> gentlemen's time has expired.